Yeah. I love my HBCU. And boy, I love it, love it. I love it, love it. I love my HBCU. And man, I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. Man. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I tune into the ACCU Sports Lab to see if my team won a loss. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth. But if they won, keep tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, he know what he be talking about. Mike and Charles, they know what they be talking about. They compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they won a loss. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor uh, Yes Sir yes, And pay attention boy. Cause he gonna teach a lesson yes. Oh hey How you guys doing? It's Kyle T. Mosley here From HBCU Legends Yes we're taking over again The Inside HBCU Sports Lab With Dr. Cavill I have Wilton Jackson here How you doing Wilt? I'm doing good Kyle It's another week of college football So I mean that's always exciting yeah, it is. And we got Coach Brian Fulford. What's going on, Coach? Ah, it's a beautiful Friday, man. Ready for some Friday Night Lights and a good weekend of, of uh, football. Ready for it. Definitely. All right. Yeah, we're taking over. It's episode number 547 in Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. And we are thank you for just joining us and being with us tonight. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what's going to happen in week three of HBCU football. And of course, we just want you guys to engage with us. We want to see your comments out there. So be with us on that end. And look, and if you are in the New York, New Jersey area or Philly area tonight, if you're interested in participating or going to the NYC Classic, uh, HBCU NYC Classic up there in New Jersey, I'm giving away <laughs> Two tickets tonight to anybody who comes in and would like to be a part of us. So join us and just talk about what's going on. So let's start this program off. Will, how do you feel about what's going to happen in week three, man? Man, it's going to be some exciting, exciting, exciting games. I think for me, just we've talked about it on several shows this week right already. Obviously in the SWAC, Jackson State and Southern. Uh, Boombox Classic. I mean, I can tell you right now, being in Jackson, it's a lot of Southern fans in Jackson. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Southern Southern travels well for, for those that may or may not know. Most most people probably know that they do. It's going to be a good game. I mean, both teams are coming off wins against uh, SIAC opponents. Um, Jackson State obviously coming off the big win against Lane and Southern coming off the big win against uh, Savannah State. So, I mean, you talk about the game. That's just the game. But the <laughs> trash talk, the tailgate, the band competition, I mean, it's going to be – Absolutely crazy. Uh, but that's just, you know, Jackson State, uh, Jackson State and Southern. That's the biggest game for me this week. Yeah, definitely. And who who's fam you playing? So fam you fam you's off this week. Fam you's off, so you get to rest. Yeah. <laughs> I get a I get a I get a I get to sit back and watch the chaos, watch people overreact, watch people stress out, pull out, pull the hair out, pull the bottles out the cabinet. You know, uh, and, and, and you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna lay back. I'm not gonna comment too much on other people's business because you know that can come back and bite me in the tail later. So I'm just gonna watch. I'm just gonna All watch. Right. I'm gonna be like this. All weekend. Just get your popcorn ready, Coach. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> it should be great. Let's first to uh, kind of kick this off. Uh this week we found out that first take. ESPN's first take with Shannon Sharp as well as with uh, Stephen A. Jackson. Those guys are going to hit the road, right? And they're going to be at different participating HBCUs, three sites this year. And I know they're going to have host Molly Quorum with those guys. But they're going to go to Howard. They're going to go to Hampton. Uh, the Howard Hampton game. They're going to go to the Tennessee State versus Eastern Illinois game, and they're going to be at the house when we take on Clark Atlanta. Man, that's going to be a good one. Uh, three, th three different spots. Will this year? I, I think the show is is expanding, and you know, to have two HBCU guys uh, taking control of it and putting this show on the road. How do you feel about that? 
I think it's good. I think it's it needs to be expanded and 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 the having the schools having the opportunity to you know have the show at their schools is going to be good. You know, we talk about HBCUs getting the proper exposure and the and the just do that they deserve. This is a good opportunity to get that, you know, the extra visibility that they, you know, may in some cases may not get. You know, you're talking about a Stephen A. Smith, a Molly Quorum, a Shannon Sharp, you know, bringing that that publicity to their programs that again, some people across America may not know anything about some of these schools. But to be able to have this this opportunity, it just it just it just bodes well for the for those programs. Yeah. Coach, you know, they did it at uh, FAMU once. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, it, it was a homecoming. Uh, I think it was homecoming uh, last year where uh, uh, they, they came. And so, I mean, a great crowd. Um, I'm, I'm mad I wasn't there to see Molly, but, you know, I, I, I got to <laughs> Oh, <watch>. OK. <laughs> I'm going to keep it, I'm gonna keep it a buck. I'm not watching that show. I'm not watching that show for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's the first thing to start. I watch for Molly. Keep it 100. Oh, man. Not the drug. He's keeping it real. Yeah, yeah. Look, yeah. hey, I ain't, I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> because we don't want any accidental videos happening. But, uh, <laughs> hey, now. Hey, hey. Can't, can't, can't go live. Can't go live. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Can't go live on that one. But, yeah, that should be a good one. You know, that's the first time, especially for an SIAC program, two SIAC programs when Clark Atlanta and Morehouse are going to have those guys to come to the Atlanta University Center. And that should be a good classic uh, all together uh, because that's an old rivalry, man. You know, uh, Clark Atlanta, I remember the years Clark Atlanta used to try to beat up on us, but Mo Brown would be the one beating up on everybody. <laughs> so uh, that should be good. Now, Jackson State, they are talking about mental health and they have a new partnership that they have uh, started to develop with the Mississippi HBCUs, uh, the mental resources out there. And I think they're going to be working with uh, MindFlow. So a lot of former student athletes who are uh, going to have an opportunity to have 54 licensed psychologists and sports psychologists to kind of help them out and kind of work through some of this, uh, the issues that they may be uh, associating their lives with. And uh, Ashley Robinson, who is the VP of and director of Jackson State's Athletics, that's spearheading this uh, program with MindFlow. So you, you're right there in Jackson, man. How important is this going to be for some of those young people who are dealing with some issues and life struggles? Oh, it's absolutely important. I can't tell you how many times I've talked to athletes and they, of course, when you're interviewing them, they're going to answer your questions. But more than anything, when you follow them, you'll quickly figure out some of the things that they're going through in their life. And then more so than anything, you have to remember, too, that these athletes are people. And so just like any athlete, good, bad, or indifferent, they're still going through real life situations. And for me, as a professor who teaches, I get a chance to sometimes see these athletes on the academic side as well. So right. being able to understand them and them being able to have an outlet to where they can go and discuss things that may be bothering them away from whatever specific sports that they play, I think it, it, it's, it's a good thing for them. Because how many times, even more, taking it from a collegiate level to a professional level real quick, how many times are we seeing mental health aspects play a part in the professional level. So why right. not find a way to basically tackle some of this now before it gets to, for those who may potentially want to pursue careers at the professional level, uh, having this opportunity to, to take care of their, their mental health starting in college. Definitely. Great opportunity for them because MindFlow is one of these organizations that's putting a priority on the mental health of the student athlete, as well as coaches are gonna have access to this as well. So this is great to have and great to be able to partner with Jackson State University. Um, let's stay on the health side for right now. And I'm just gonna interject this. September is Prostate Cancer Awareness Month, guys. Uh, I am a prostate cancer survivor and fought and got treatment. So guys go out there, get checked, help your system out, help your family out. Don't be afraid. It's something that you need to tackle and you can tackle. Coach, uh, how do you feel about that? I mean, you've been around some guys, I'm pretty sure who have dealt with prostate cancer as well, right? Well, my father is a, a prostate cancer survivor. So I am 
and, and this is a this is a very proud man. You know, grew up in uh, Jim Crow uh, in in Norfolk, Virginia, Virginia Beach, and so uh, to hear him be honest with me about going through that. You know, you know, your relationship with your father is a special one. And so my dad is very old school. We don't talk about a lot. We don't talk about emotions a lot. There's a lot of things we don't talk about. Yep. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm thankful that my mother, when she was alive, that she encouraged my dad to go. And when he had the first sign of something that he went and checked and that we were able to, 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 you know, figure out things and still, you know, I, my dad is so proud. I didn't even know about it until kind of like the day before. It was like, oh, hey, I'm going in to get surgery. And I'm like, what? <laughs> On what? For what? Yeah. You know, yeah. But, I'm, but I'm glad that between my sister and my mom, that there were women in his life that encouraged him because we have lost family members who didn't, men who didn't. You know, his brother, my uncle, was one of those proud men who he didn't want to go get right. checked. So wow. you kind of grow up with those stigmas about, especially us as black men, we grew up with those stigmas about getting checked and when we should go get checked. And, and, and uh, you got to break that stuff down. And, you know, you just got to sort of, you got to be, a, you have to be a man to go get checked. That, that's right. That's a message that we have to tell young, young guys, all that bravado you see on IG and all these other places, man, that, that you want to be around, don't you? You, you want to be alive? Well, Go get checked. You'll be okay. You'll be okay. Yeah. You'll be okay. You, you're right. Because, look, my dad, I was 19. Well, I was 18 coming home for Thanksgiving. And that's when I found out my dad. I was in my sophomore year at Morehouse. And that's when my dad disclosed to the family he had prostate cancer and testicular cancer. Mm. And uh, the, the next month, around the Christmas holidays, is when he had the operation and everything, but I've been getting checked ever since 25, man. <laughs> I just want to be sure every year. And I've been trying to get my brother to do it and he's stubborn. He doesn't want yeah. to do it. But anyway, guys, don't be stubborn. Go ahead and get it done. It's Amen. it's not going to hurt your feelings when uh, you, you know that you can be able to save your life. And it's very treatable at this time. All right. So coach, we're going to take our first break before going into the next segment. But guys, don't forget, follow Dr. Cavill as well as the inside the HBCU Sports Lab. And you can be able to check those guys out on YouTube as well. Go ahead and subscribe, mash up the lights, mash up the lights, and comment, comment, comment. We want to hear from you. We'll be back in, what, two and two. If you think all pads are exactly the same, think again. This is Always Ultra Thin's reinvented with the Always Triple Protection System. This pad wicks gushes 90% faster, absorbs even more so you can feel dry, and locks odors in. Rethink your pad for up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort with the totally reinvented Always Ultra Thins. This is always like never before. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell Leadership Principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay, call Cuvée. Nope. Nope. Come on, him. Ooh, I like him. The Quicker Picker Upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the Quicker Picker Upper. This is Ryan Fulford. A.D. Drew and I are co-hosts of the BCSN Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBCU athletics. From the games, teams, coaches, and fan interest stories, we cover it all. 
You can find our shows on Facebook at BCSM Sports Wrap, YouTube at MyJBN Online, and everywhere you listen to podcasts like Anchor, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find the show on the Jericho Broadcast Network's app. Make sure to download. We look forward to you joining the conversation and being a part of the show. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they're going to tell you if your team, if they want to love you. Yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor yes, sir. Yes, sir. and pay attention because he's going to teach a lesson. Yes. All right, guys. Kyle T. Mosley back taking over inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Wilton Jackson. We snuck in in the back door, yo. <laughs> No, we are here having a good time. Coach, man, look, you guys, fam, you are looking good. I got it to admit, you guys are looking good. Daniel Richardson is doing a fabulous job as a young quarterback for the Rattlers right now. And Coach Cozy has a great staff that you guys have put together. Last weekend, of course, it was a challenge against Miami. And uh, Shannon Sharp had something to say about it on his nightcap. Uh, he talked about the fact that he feels as though HBCUs should not take less than $1 million to play an FBS school. And I wanted to get your thought as well as Wilton's thought on how this is becoming a pervasive across uh, the whole talk of HBCU sports realm. Should a, a team take less than $1 million to be able to play these money games? Well, if we're qualifying it as the power four, you know, formerly power five, given the amount of money that those programs are receiving these days, he's on point. Yeah. I, I kind of agree with him. I mean, you know, or, you know, I what, uh, the school that played uh, at Notre Dame got 1.4. Yeah, right. more than Illinois. Illinois. Right. Right. Tennessee State got a million uh, last year, if I'm not mistaken. At Notre Dame. Yeah, at Notre Dame. So and I think somebody's making a mill from a Power Five this year. I think uh, it's Southern or somebody's playing a Power Four this year. Well, Prairie View is playing Michigan State oh, yeah. this weekend. I don't think it's a million. I think it's around that. 750 range or something to that nature. And that 750 uh, is what FAMU is getting from Miami. Now, that was a deal that was negotiated, if I'm not mistaken, about two or three years ago. Yep. And I think it's uh, 700 for this appearance, and then there's 700 something thousand in two years from now. Okay. So, that at, at the time, that was a, a, a above standard, right? So, now going forward, yeah. I think they can certainly afford a million dollars. Now, I don't know if a million dollars includes the band and all the other extra, you know, perks and, and whistles. And, and thankfully, I'll be honest, FAMU did not bring their band. You know, apparently oh, really? the rumors are, yeah, no, FAMU, the Marching 100 did not go to South Florida. Um, apparently, Miami kind of came in with an offer of only $40,000, which I mean, come for on. the band. Yes, yes. Extra, extra on top of everything else they were paying. And the university or whomever the decision makers are were wise to say, nah, that you got to come up with more than that if you want uh, 40000 would only get you maybe the percussion, percussion section. You know? <laughs> or the drum majors. <laughs> right, drum majors, drum majors and the tubas. I mean, that's what you get for 40000 I don't yeah. even think that's worth it. Yeah. So it, just the the... I said this the other day in terms of, you know, if you are frustrated with your HBCU playing a power five and getting beat, uh, you know, 59 to six, 77 to nothing, 69 to three, whatever these outrageous, then you have to be able to present an alternative to make up those monies. Hmm. And that's going to take some creativity by our athletic administrators. And it's also going to take a bigger commitment to purchase season tickets from fan bases. Let, let's stay on that right quick before I, I go over to what's going to happen next year with Gramlin. Wilton, we talk about tickets and ticket season tickets has always been a point of contention for some of the HBCUs. They, I don't see where they're big ticket drives. I know Florida AM does a good job 
I've seen their campaigns, but I've seen some other uh, HBCUs closer to Louisiana and Texas. It's not a whole bunch of uh, ticket drives that are out there and campaigning for their season tickets. How about Jackson? What's happening over there? Oh, I can assure you from the moment spring football rolls around in the spring game in April, are you hearing about season tickets, season tickets, season tickets, get, 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 get Jackson state, come to all the home games. This is the <laughs> amount of home games we have. I mean, you got, you might have, uh, uh, the AD talking about it in a video. You might have someone else on campus talking about season tickets. I mean, it's from start literally from the moment spring ball starts up until the first game of the season. That's all you hear is about getting season tickets, getting packages for season tickets, tailgating, making sure you come to home games because we need your support. I, Look, I mean, man, I, I saw one college, they were talking about season tickets after the first week of the the, fir the first kickoff. They were talking yeah, about season tickets yeah. for the next year. So, yeah. yeah. I, I would say, but I mean, outside of Jackson State, and uh, the only other program that I have visibly seen being heavy on that type of promotion is Alabama a and uh, okay. A.D. Paul Bryant, Dr. Paul Bryant. Yeah, right. So, I mean, kudos to um, Ashley Robinson and the Jackson State, uh, everyone there who's making it a, a – saying, hey, look, we have this large stadium, right? And, yeah, we know we average 30, you know, and 40-plus, whatever. But getting people to make the commitment is, is a strong push. And I love the – the drives, uh, whether I think it was like they were trying to drive at least get 10,000 uh, season tickets or maybe a, a bigger number. But whatever it was, that's what I'm like. When I look at FIP, that's what I was yearning for. That's what Rattler Nation and several other Rattlers, those of us who talk about, we're begging. We're begging our administration, our athletic administration. Why aren't we doing something like that? Why aren't yeah. we getting that, that, that commitment? And I'm sure there's other programs that are thinking the same thing. So, I mean, kudos to... Jackson State and Alabama a and for, for, for making that a push on a, and doing it on a consistent level. Yeah. Look, here at Texas Southern, I'm not going to bash anybody, but they have a great stadium with the Dynamo Stadium that's now Shell Energy Stadium, right? And you're talking about 22,000 can be able to fit that stadium. But they also have a, a deal where they can put concerts out there if they choose to do so and things of that nature. And I just want them to utilize that property as much as possible to be able to bring some revenue into uh, Texas Southern so that it can be able to help them. You look, you go to Prairie View up 290, man, beautiful campus, beautiful stadium, beautiful everything. And those areas, are they being used? I hope they can be able to have a, uh, AD Golf, as well as VP uh, of Athletics, Dr. Granger, be able to get together and see if they can do some more collaboration in there to kind of push those season tickets because the, the season opener uh, in preview was sold out. So that's a good sign. All right. And uh, just got a text, man. Prayer View is only getting 450K to go up to East Langston for tomorrow's game. Wow. That's, that's, that's the that's the old school standard, right? Yeah. That's, that's what you used to get four or five years ago, you know? Yeah. Four fifty. And that's as a it. and as a coach, you just think about it. You know, how many coaches did we hear throughout these first couple of weeks for those teams that, that are playing like power four schools? How much have they stressed about being healthy, coming out of those games being healthy? Of course, you got to get the check, but then at the same time, you still have conference games to play after that and if you mess around and get your star quarterback or your star impact player hurt then then what are you going to do yeah well look uh alabama a&m uh 525,000 when they played auburn prairie view like 450 um playing michigan state north carolina central got around 430,000 at the obc uh north carolina a t got 325,000. I apologize. North Carolina Central Plain, North Carolina this weekend, they're getting uh, 430,000. But all in all, guys, sometimes just to be able to have the auxiliary groups, you talk about hundreds of thousands of dollars just to be able to put them into hotels and the travel and everything to that nature. So, yeah, I think the, the mark should be over a million dollars, especially when uh, next year, 
Grambling is playing Ohio State. You talk about two-story programs, uh, legendary programs that people know that name, Grambling name across the nation. You know, and that's going to be a, a well watched game and well attended game. And I think they offer Grambling one point, what was it, one point two, one point four million, something to that nature. And um, but they were willing to give UConn one point eight mil. Hmm, just something we shouldn't devalue our programs when we do these negotiations. All right, let's go into the next segment. Let's talk about the HBCU players on the 53-man rosters this past weekend. But I can't, before we even talk about the HBCU players, we have 15 black starting quarterbacks. Well, 15 yep. black starting quarterbacks to open the season. Back in 19, was it 68 or 69 when... James Shaq Harris opened up for the Buffalo Bills. It took many, many, many years later before another one opened up the season. So th I think that's great progress. Uh, what's your thoughts? No, I think it is good progress. And I think it, it goes to show that more and more black quarterbacks are getting opportunities. And with that, not only are they getting opportunities, when you go back and take a step back into the collegiate level, these quarterbacks, the way that the quarterback position is changing is no longer what it used to be, say, between like the 70s and in the 80s of like, hey, we're just going to get a quarterback who's going to sit in the pocket, who's going to throw passes downfield. These quarterbacks are dynamic playmakers, and that's not going to change at one, one, one point in time. And I'm younger than the both of you all. I can remember people saying, well, Michael Vick, all he do is run and he's mm -hmm. running out of the pocket and, you know, and things like that. But now it's like, look at these quarterbacks coming out. Look at Jalen Hurts. Look yeah. at what he can do. Yeah. You know, look at CJ Stroud. You know, look at these, look at the way these quarterbacks are coming in. And not only have they elevated their games starting in college, but it's just the more so the fact of they're becoming more smarter, they're becoming more sophisticated in preparing for the next level. Because how many times have we seen quarterbacks that have had successful college careers and then get to the NFL and think they can duplicate the same success. Well, it's a different level. The players are just as good as you. And at the same time, you have to elevate your game to the next level and, and also being willing to elevate your game to the next level. Yeah. But sometimes some of them aren't, aren't willing to do that. Yeah. I think the next step for us, of course, in my opinion, is to get some of these young, talented HBCU quarterbacks onto those rosters and sticking onto those rosters, right? And, <clears throat> you know, we we had high hopes for Glass a few seasons ago. Mm -hmm. uh, Davius Richard had that unfortunate injury in the HBCU Legacy Bowl. But the great thing is he will be on the Houston Roughnecks roster this season in March of 2025. And hopefully that's the pathway for Mr. Richard to get in to the program uh, with somebody. So you had guys like Teron Armstead, of course, Marquise Bell. We got to talk about those Rattlers. <laughs> Isaiah as well. He was up there with the Colts. And uh, I, I think all in all, if you look at some of the talent, and we had a couple of signings just recently uh, that these guys are getting onto practice squads. I, I think the all together we have over 30-something plus HBCU players that are not only on the active roster, but totally on the practice squad as well. So good, good sign, guys. Uh, I think right now, let's go ahead and take a quick break. We're going to be back. We're going to talk a little bit about Dr. Cavill's, his top teams in Division One and Division Two. But we'll tell you now, we got our own. We're going to upset the classroom <laughs> and give our thoughts about Dr. V Cavill. You ain't here today, Doc. I'm here. I told him we're going to take over. <laughs> best to believe he listening, though. <laughs> yes, sir. So we'll be back in two and two. Thank you. It's never too early to plant the seed, to share the tradition, and instill a sense of pride in your HBCU with your little ones. HBCU Pride and Joy Children's Boutique helps you share your school spirit with a wide selection of adorable kids apparel and accessories officially licensed from your favorite HBCU. Visit HBCUPrideJoy.com and follow us on all social media at HBCU Pride Joy on Facebook and Twitter. 
supermarket sushi, really? No. Wait, Troy, you work here? I'm never not working. Like head and shoulder scalp shield technology, up to 100% dandruff protection, even between washes. Never not working, huh? Oh, Troy, you're such a good teacher. Yeah, I know. <laughs> never not working. Never not working. Never ever not working. Are you serious? Never not working. Standard protection that's never not working. Head and shoulder scalp shield technology. Hey, grab me one too. Charmin Ultra Soft has so much cushiony softness, it's hard for your family to remember. They can use less. Sweet pillows of softness. This is soft. Holy Charmin. Oh, excuse me. Roll it back, everybody. Sorry. Charmin Ultra Soft is so cushiony soft, you'll want more. But it's so absorbent, you can use less. So it's always worth it. Now, what did we learn about using less? You gotta roll it back, everybody. <laughs> we all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? This is the Dean of the College of HBCU Sports, Kenyatta Cavill of Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Come mix it up in the lab where the course lecture is in session every Tuesday from 6 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook Live, YouTube, Spreaker, or the BCSN app. As we discuss all things about the HBCU sports culture, including exploring the week that was in the sporting HBCU dash as well as the upcoming week of HBCU Sports. With me, the Dean, the College of HBCU Sports, on Dr. Cavill's Inside HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Watson and Charles Bishop. Course lecture dismissed. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop If you know them like I know them They gon' tell you if your team, if they want to allow that And who the ball, who the ball so listen to Professor Yes Sir And pay attention cause he gon' teach a lesson all right, Kyle T. Mosley back with Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. We have Wilton Jackson as well as Brian Fulford here with us tonight. Uh, how's AD going? I mean, how's he doing right now, man? Um, it, He's doing well. I, I, can't, I can't say where he's at, but uh -huh. I, I think you will see him. I don't know if I'm saying I don't want to give. I don't want to give. <laughs> I, don't, I can't oh. give away too much. But I think okay. you will see him, so okay. I'm going to stop now before I get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll leave that alone. All guys. All right, let's go over Dr. Cavill's top. I guess he gives, he only gave us seven teams. Yeah, I, I <laughs> well, Hold on, if you, if you talk a little bit longer here, give, give me another 30 seconds, and I found it. I finally found oh, okay. it. Oh, okay. You know, All right. And I can, All right. I can, I can before we go it. into that, uh, we have to extend our condolences to the West Virginia State football team, as well as the whole family uh, out there in that community, losing uh, the young man who is a, was a senior on the football team, Mr. Harrington. Uh, he passed away due to a off-campus incident. Uh, we don't know more about the details, but Losing a, a young man in college, just about to start his uh, professional life after this year, uh, it's got to be hard on the family, friends, and everybody, especially that team. So we are praying for you guys uh, in, in comfort there as well. And we just learned also HBCU Game Day's founder, Stephen Gaither, his father passed away. Uh, so we are praying for him as well uh, in his loss. So send out some love to those guys, guys. Um, Jackson State, man, boombox classic, of course. The drum majors, the, the majorettes, the dancing girls. What do they call it? The J sets? J sets? The J sets, yeah. The J sets and the dancing dolls. The dancing and the dancing dolls. Yeah. Oh, my God. Look, um, Ralph Cooper would give my son a lot of angst 
because, you know, Kyle would go down there in halftime. I'll say, hey, man, you got any footage of the band? No, he got footage of the dancing girls, though. <laughs> Gotta make the dad <laughs> feel proud. Dad feel proud. Like, hey, that, that's, that's my son. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chip off. Proud, proud dad moment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, he's got his head pointed in the right direction. <laughs> All right. Do we have it up yeah. and ready? Yep, yep. Ready. Uh, I got the uh, the mid major and the uh, the uh, mid major and the, uh, the the major. Okay, let's start with the mid major. All right. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Here we go. There we go. Okay. Well, I think you guys are kind of uh, in sync here with the mid majors at number one, Johnson C. Smith. Surprising. But Very. I told a lot of people these guys are up and rising, man. Yep. Gotta watch out for those Golden Bulls, right? Yep. No, absolutely. Yeah. Clark Atlanta at number two, Shaw at number three. Virginia Union drops down probably to number four. The loss against Norfolk, was that really a big hurt for the program, in your guys' opinion? Uh, in my opinion, no. I mean, being that Norfolk is a bigger school, obviously, than, than Virginia Union. So I'm, I don't I don't necessarily think it's a, it's a knock. But I do think that, like, when you look at that game, there was a strong possibility that Virginia, Virginia Union could have pulled out that win. Yeah. I, was, I was one, you know, we were talking about this on another show, that, like, this would have been a potential upset last week. Um, if they could have potentially got the the win against Norfolk State, yeah, yeah, I think if you're if you're discounting Union and State, then that means you're telling me that you thought that was a winnable game, and that those teams were as good or better than Hampton and Norfolk State, mm. and you're discounting them for losing those games. That's how because I can't just justify it with just the record alone, right. but I, I just feel like if you're ranking them lower than the three other teams that are unbeaten, you know, because I, I don't think those three teams that are unbeaten, I don't think they're better than Union. I don't know about State, but I don't think believe they're better than Union, in my personal opinion. But Yeah, and good points, good points, because, uh, look, Jada Bias, you still have that. <laughs> He's a beast. Yep. What, the first game over 200 yards rushing again? So, man. Incredible. Uh, State next, and we talked about Winston-Salem State. That was a close game. Yep. Winnable game. Winnable game. Entertaining game. Very close game. I it actually thought they were going to pull that one out for a minute. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we end up with Fayetteville State. All right, so let's look at uh, Major Wilton's. Division. Can we pull Wilton's oh, okay. up? Yeah. yeah, okay. Okay, hold on. Let me go, let me go there. Uh, let's see. I think I got Wilkins. There we go. Yeah, right there. All right, Mr. Jackson, you count yours down. So I had number one, uh, Johnson C. Smith. I was okay with that. I had Clark Atlanta number two. And again, I've been saying this from since the beginning of the season three weeks ago. This is a Clark Atlanta team that didn't win a game last year, and to <laughs> see them win two games already. And, and one thing about this, as we look at these rankings, they're week, they're week to week, so. We'll get a chance to, you know, change and see which teams will be at the top or or, or, or which teams will not be at the top throughout the season. Uh, I gave number three to Shaw. I was okay with that. Um, I gave Virginia State uh, at number four, Virginia Union at number five, and then I put uh, Winston Salem State at number six, and then I put Fayetteville State at seven, and then I ended eight, nine, and ten with Livingstone, Elizabeth City State, and then Bluefield State. Okay, good, good. Now you talk about number two, Clark Atlanta. People cannot tell me coaching does not count. You yeah. can't tell me that. Coaching counts. It means something. For them to have this type of turnaround early in their season, coaching matters, guys. And can you pull up mine? Yeah. Can I ask, can I ask Wilton a quick question? With, okay. with where you have Virginia State in Union, I'm curious, preseason or before uh, week one, did you have State ranked ahead of Union to start the preseason? I did not. Okay. Interesting. Right. Yeah, okay. I did not. All right, let's see. Yeah, Kyle's here. Here we go. I still got to get the Panthers at top dogs, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe in you, Doc. I believe in you, man. So, yeah, Panthers, that was a close game. Shouldn't let you guys go down in the Division Two rankings. Still number one in my book. 
Smith second, Clark Atlanta. That pains me every time I got to see Clark Atlanta at number three and not Morehouse. And I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm just saying. All right. And Winston Salem. Now, Edward Waters. That's Ooh. interesting. That's it interesting. Is. Okay. And that's a good program, guys. Shaw, Vaughn State, then Fayetteville, Livingstone, and Bluefield. Those are mine. Let's go to Doc's Division One, mid or what we call the majors. So let me ask you real quick, Kyle. Yeah. Given that Florida Memorial, who beat Edward Waters, plays Clark this weekend, should they beat Clark? How <laughs> high would you be willing to put Florida Memorial in your top ten? I'm not gonna hold you to it. You know what? That that's a great point, man. And, and I think they would have to make a leap into it. I really do. I really have, you know, so I just said that was one game, but I think you have a great point. All right. And there we go. There's Doc's uh, major division top seven. Some team called the Rattlers is number one. We don't know who this team is. <laughs> <laughs> got to beat the champ. You want to beat the champ. Got to come, gotta come get us. Got to come get us. <laughs> All right. Look, Coach Cozy is putting on a show through HBCUs thus far. So, yeah, they are number one, uh, North Carolina Central, two, Morgan State, South Carolina State, Delaware State. That's an interesting uh, ranking for Delaware State at number five. They played Hawaii pretty tight through halftime, then got away from those guys, but they were able to win last week, and Alabama State drops down to six, and Texas Southern at number seven. All right, that's an interesting list there, man. The, uh, the voters, any thoughts? Do the voters know that Elon is not an FBS school? Elon is not an FBS school. Elon is an FCS school. Elon went <laughs> to North Carolina Central and whooped their tail, whooped mm. them, pulled out like like in the meme of the of the of the <laughs> what is it? Uh, the, the, he pulls up. I mean, just whooped the snot out of Central. And yeah. since I got four first place votes, what are we doing? You know, I'm I'm concerned about Central's uh quarterback play. You know, Harris. you know, Walker is a good talent, but uh can he be consistent? And you know, it's just difficult replacing a guy who is a four-year starter, you know. So anyway, let's take a look at Wilton's. Go ahead, Wilt. So I kept the Rattlers at number one, and I'm, I'm kind of under the situation of until they've been beaten or, like, the champs are the champs, I'm going to keep them at number one. Uh, North Carolina Central at two. Uh, I didn't I didn't hold the loss against them against Elon, um, to, I guess, per se, to, to drop them. So considering that they – and it's crazy because I thought that game would have been a lot closer than it would have been considering that they beat Elon last year. But, again, that goes back to the point of the impact Richard had on that program. Um, so I still kept them at number two. Number three is Morgan State. I mean, you know what you get from Morgan State and Damon Wilson. You're going to get a bunch of defense. I think for anything, if they hope to remain in this top ten, we're going to have to see more offense. Like, I mean, limited offense is not going to get you a championship. Now, defense will maybe get you to the championship and help you win, but you got to get there. And so in terms of getting there, you got to have some offense um, in that in that process. And then, of course, South Carolina State, Chennis Berry. This is my sleeper team. I've been high on South Carolina State all season. And so considering, you know, three weeks in, they've been impressive. Like I said, they had FAMU on the ropes. Mm -hmm. um, and to see, you know, obviously they get that win against the Citadel last week. Like they're they're definitely headed in the right direction in Tennis Berry's first year. I put Texas Southern at number five. Now, a lot of people will look at that and say they got blasted by Rice, you know. But at the same time, this is also the same team that beat Prairie View in week one. And I think some of that kind of flowed into that, that, that game against Rice to where they didn't play as well. So – I'm interested to see if Texas Southern can still say in this to, can they still stay in this mix. I put Jackson State at number six, mainly due to the fact of if people watch that game against Louisiana Monroe, that was a close game at halftime. Then, of course, they ended up losing it 30 to 14. But then, you know, they get a win against, um, you know, against uh, Lane and the SIC, SIAC opponent. So I, I put them at six. I couldn't put them in the top five yet because I feel like they haven't played you know, a, a high opponent yet in terms of from a conference standpoint. Uh, then I, after Jackson State, I put Prairie View. 
Um, I like the win that they got against Northwestern State. I thought that was a strong win, a strong way to bounce back. Uh, then I put Delaware State at number eight, number nine, Howard, after their win against Mercyhurst, and then I put Alabama State at number 10. Okay. Good, good, good lineup. Any thoughts about that lineup there, Coach? Well, you know, I, I – uh... It was. I'll tell you what. It was so hard putting a top ten together, and I bet it was for both of you because it was. You, you're really you're looking at all the losses. Either you lost to a team that you were supposed to lose to, maybe with the exception of North Carolina Central, yeah. or you won against somebody that you were supposed to beat up. Or unless you're Howard, you you snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. You know what I'm saying? So it was like. How do you value the wins and losses? You know, like for me, I dropped Central because they were at home to an FCS. But I may have moved up South Carolina State because I said, well, like you said, Wilton, they had FAMU on the ropes. They were a quarter away from beating FAMU, really like 12 minutes away. Yeah, yeah. Then they turned that performance around and went on the road. So Citadel. Yeah, yeah. So and, and even Prairie View, I know people will say, man, Prairie View tried to give the game away, but they still went on the road after a loss and oh, won. So it's like yep. the two most impressive wins came from South Carolina State and Prairie View, and everybody else was kind of, yeah, you That's beat what we somebody. Expected. Yeah, you beat <laughs> yeah. somebody up that you were supposed to beat up, you know? Yeah. And yeah. So I don't okay. know, it's hard. Coach, do we need to go to a quick break before ending the show? Or nah, you can carry it. You can go. I'm, I'm sure we do. Yeah, we can go to a quick break and then come back with your top ten. You know, okay, we'll you know. go to a quick I break get, and then we're gonna trouble. wrap it up for you. Yeah, I get in trouble for not going to break, but anyway, you got it. Go ahead, Kyle. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh. Choice Hotels is a family of brands that helps you get the most for your money so you can be any traveler you want to be. You could be a free hot breakfast hero in a comfort hotel. Yes! That's how you waffle! Mr. This Script got a plot twist at a Radisson Hotel. A business big leaguer. Go for key. Even the ultimate pool float inflator. With 22 brands and the best value for your money, Choice Hotels has a stay for any you. Book direct at choicehotels.com, where travels come true. Gotta get the corners. Human Voice has always connected audiences with experiences. Major brands all across America have trusted Kevers Voice time and time again. Conversational, powerhouse, intelligent, and sincere. That's the voice you need for your creative marketing process. K-E-A-V-E-R-S-V-O-I-C-E dot com. Kevers Voice, Kevers Voice, Kevers Voice dot com. Always on, all the time. Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gonna tell you if your team, if they wanna love that and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor uh, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And pay attention because he's going to teach a lesson. Yes. All right. We're about to shut down the school. <laughs> you guys are going to be gone for the whole rest of the year. No. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do that. Uh, Doc will get on us about it. But look, man, I, I think let's look at my top 10. Just look at the majors. Let's just go for the majors, guys. And, of course, the Rattlers, number one. I still got the NCCU, number two. But the Bulldogs, Jenner's, you know, Coach Barry, man, I think he's going to be bringing it. I think he's going to surprise some people. 
Yeah, all right. So that loss against Elon makes me more and more kind of, uh, oh, what's going to happen that uh, game between NCCU and State later in the year? That's going to be interesting. Uh, Alabama State, great way to rebound. I know uh, Andrew is not going to be in, uh, and uh, they did not have O'Brien, but that was a great way for a coach to get those guys to use the running game to be able to get back on track. Market State number five, Howard, Prairie View, Jackson State, and Texas Southern and Gramlin State. I could have put uh, Southern at number 10 as well. Uh, so, But those are my top 10 at this time, guys. And let's talk about some of the featured games of the week. We already talked about the Boombox Classic, of course, but uh, you have Morehouse and Howard. Those guys are playing, and that's going to be at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time on NBC. And you also have a game that I think is kind of under the radar, that Hampton and Norfolk State game. Mm -hmm. Wilton, what's your thoughts about that? That's going to be a really good game and one I'm going to have my eyes on simply because, you know, there's been a lot of chatter, of course, about Dawson Odoms and what he needs to do uh, to, you know, to make sure that he remains at Norfolk State. But this, this is going to be a game that I feel like comes down to which team for sure is going to be able to run the ball. And then also which team is, believe it or not, on the opposite side, able to stop the other other teams, you know, rushing attack because both teams like to run the ball. Talking about a Norfolk State team with a uh, quarterback in, in Jalen Daniels and then Kavon King. If you like a physical downhill running back, he's the guy you want to look at. And then, of course, everybody knows about Elijah Burris, who doesn't know about Eli Elijah Burris mm -hmm. at this point and what he's done for Hampton. Um, and just looking at, you know, this game, it's so early in the season, but, you know, it's a rivalry game. It's the Battle of the Bay. A lot of fans are going to come out. And so I just think it's going to be it's going to be a good game. It's going to be a good turnout. Uh, but I definitely think this is a game that Norfolk State has to have. Yeah. Now, Coach, I'm going to be a little bit controversial on this one. Edward Waters and Alcorn. Mm. Alcorn has to win this game, right? Yeah. If Edward Waters go down to the reservation and win this game, that's going to be a, a, a major sign of trouble with the Braves. So pay attention to that game, guys. Uh, then you have Pine Bluff against Tennessee State. Coach, how do you see that one? That's the uh, Southern Heritage, Southern Heritage, Southern Heritage Classic. Classic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the interesting thing about this game, you've got two teams. You don't, I don't know if you really know what you have with these two teams Not because sure. both these teams whoop the snot out of an opponent while also getting the snot knocked out of them. Knocked out of them. <laughs> you know, so it's like, right. okay, are we as bad as our five-plus touchdown loss? Seven, maybe seven touchdown loss, whatever. Or are we as good as the 30, 40-point-plus victory that we had? And I know Valley scored some late points, but by then it was 31-0 over or whatever. Um, so I'm interested. I this This is intriguing from that perspective. Normally I would not watch this game, but because of – the fact that you have two teams who have played Jekyll and Hyde so far in the first two weeks, and, and, and deservedly so, probably, because of the competition. But, okay, preseason's over. Now they get a play. The season starts for UAPB and Tennessee State on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. And, and I said this last night on the Black Sports Insiders. To have Pine Bluff lose, what, by 72 points, then – win by 73 points it, it was just amazing that's just i don't think there's ever been a swing like that in the history of college football we need mm -hmm. to get the analysts to take a look at it and we got clark atlanta uh, going against M florida memorial that's going to be a good one uh and a game that people should possibly keep their eye on and it's just my opinion but the lane against benedict game. That would be something people should keep their eyes on as well. That could have some implications there later this season. All right, guys, uh, any last thoughts before we close it out? You know, you talk about that Southern Heritage Classic game. These are the same two teams that played last year, and it was a close game. And so I think, you know, looking at where things are, both of them coming off massive, well, 
Arkansas Pine Bluff coming out for massive win, and then of course NC State coming out the the loss to North Dakota State. I think it's going to come down to which team can make those prolific plays offensively, because we've seen Tennessee State. Obviously, they like to run the ball. They've had some quarterback issues, uh, in in you know pretty much under Eddie George's entire tenure at Tennessee State. So to see which which offense is going to be able to move the ball efficiently uh, down the field, I think that's what it's going to come to in that particular game, and if. Arkansas Pine Bluff can stay out of trouble in terms of, you know, accumulating penalties and things of that nature. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, let's see here. I think we got a few more minutes, right, coach? Oh yeah. Yeah. We, we, we can go, we can go uh, a couple more minutes. We're good. Okay. All right. All right. So coaches on the hot seat. Let's kind of talk about that. Norfolk coach Odom's. He kind of redeemed himself, but did he redeem himself enough if they fall to the Pirates? Any, any thoughts? The, these are – so Norfolk State fans have said that the, the two previous games that start the season against FAMU and uh, East Carolina, those are preseason games. I mean, sure, they would have liked to have beaten FAMU, uh, and they were realistic about East Carolina. But the rivalry in the season started last week and this week. And they took care of business against Virginia State. That was a good win. Yep. It was a good team. Now you got Hampton. And the crazy part about this rivalry, the last four years, the road team has won this game each of the last four years. Really? Yep. Guess who's the, so Hampton's coming across the, the bay like, oh, we own Dick Price Stadium. You know, y'all, they, they coming in there to tell the Norfolk State folks, like, y'all don't fill this thing up, so we just going to bring our people over and we're going to run your house. You know, oh so that, I'm like, I'm so intrigued by this game. I, I, you talk about pull up the popcorn. This is one of those games where, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have a popcorn ready. I'm going to be sitting in front of the TV, watching it on ESPN Plus, because I want to see the, the, the fireworks for this contest for three hours. I'm looking forward to this game. Ooh, wee. All right. Cedric Thomas over at the reservation. Will, what's your thoughts? They absolutely have to win this game. If they do not win this game, Cal, I can assure you, all Knights Brave Nation will go crazy. If they, three, if they, three I, games yeah. in, they're going crazy in three games. For 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 Edward Waters, yes, oh, like right. they 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 will lose. I promise you, they will lose it. If you think you've seen fans in like you know Texas Southern or Prairie View or Jackson State or something. Go down. I don't know if both of y'all have ever went to Alcorn. Yeah. I okay. So you, you've been there. They're, they're, yeah. Like their stadium is really intimate, and like their <laughs> fans are like they 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 care about Alcorn football. So I can assure you, and the the program that has been accustomed to winning and winning championships and winning division titles and things of that nature, like they are expecting success. Yeah. Yes, their coach, you know, obviously is somewhere else now, and you know they they have uh, Cedric Thomas, but it's just like they expect to win. And if he does not win that game, I can assure you, you will hear a lot of chatter going into next week. Okay. And I wanted to abstain, Wilton, from this one, the Boombox Classic. Who's under fire, T.C. Taylor or Coach Graves? Honestly, I don't really know if either of our, either of the coaches are under fire in terms okay. of whether or not if they lose or win this game. I mean, it's the beginning of the season. Uh to y'all's point of you really don't know what you have in your team fully yet because both of them are coming off massive wins against SIAC opponents. So I think it's more so of a situation that they're trying to win the game. But I'll say this, as a coach in TC who played for a coach that finished, had three seasons that were seven and four, and Robert Judge Hughes, for those who may know Jackson State's history, he ended up getting let go. And I mm. can assure you, seven and four is in TC Taylor's it's right here. It's on his forehead. He's like, you know what? I don't want to go seven and four. He won't get fired per se after this season for going seven and four. But I, I can assure you, he will feel much better at night if he gets eight and three or nine and two this year. I can assure you that he's thinking about that going into his contract year next year. Yeah, and you had a very good article on Anscape about him and building his program this season. So you guys go read Wilton's article out there on Anscape. All right, coach, 
We're ready to bring it to a close. This is uh, HBCU Sports Lab. I'm Kyle T. Mosley. That's Wilton Jackson as well as Coach Brian Fulford of the Rattlers. He gets to chill this week <laughs> and look at everybody else uh, kind of sweat it out. But uh, you guys will be – will uh, Dr. Cavill be on on Sunday? Yeah, they usually do the uh, extra credit show. Uh, I believe it's uh, okay. 10 Eastern – Nine Central, if I'm not mistaken. They do a great recap of all the games. Uh, yeah, and then uh, tomorrow you got the uh, noon Eastern 11 Central Carlos Brown show. So I know Carlos will be talking about that Southern Jackson State game. So that'll be that'll be that'll be good. That'll be good. Yeah, he and Charles Edmund. Well, Charles will be on the call for the Braves game. So um, that's going to be good to listen to him as well. Guys, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Go and support your HBCU. Tune into the different channels. If you've got four or five TVs and you're ready to look at some good football, this is the week to do it. So enjoy yourself. Thank you for following us and viewing us here at Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Take care.